Welcome back. I am here with a dear friend and a woman who has extraordinary, interesting stories to tell. And we're going to speak with Neda Tavana Ingram about her experience as a leader in the auto industry and now as a woman onto her next phase and her next career as part of our Women in Business series. Welcome, Netta. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. pleasure. I'm really excited to talk to you about being a woman in business, being a girlfriend, being um, you know, a woman onto her next phase of a career. But I think your, your biggest acknowledgement in the industry was leading the uh, Orange Coast Fiat dealership to the largest sales of any Fiat dealership in the country. Is that right? That is right. That yeah. Is true. So yeah. tell us about that. Um, well, Fiat brand new to um, United States actually come back to the United States was in 2011 mm -hmm. and I had an opportunity I was with uh, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram already and I had an opportunity to go in at one of the very first stores and um, open and start working in it uh, with two salespeople myself and um, started actually with only six cars on the lot to total and they're little cars and they're little cars <laughs> they're little cars yes on a whole lot so um, it was fun. It was fun. It was interesting. It was new. And we had a lot of people that wanted to see it, wanted to see it to come back. And it was exciting. And um, I liked it. I liked it. And little by little, we added more products, more products. And um, it ended up being big. A for tremendous us. success. Yes. Yes. So, in the end, how many people did you have working with you? Started with you and two. How many did it grow to? Um, eight sales people and two sales managers, two finance managers, uh, three receptionists, wow. and of course the it whole office, big. yes. And uh, no more six cars. You ended with a few hundred cars on the lot? Probably around 400, 450 cars. Um, it's exciting. Yes, yes. And yes. Fiat's are so cute and fun, they are. Yes, so yes. The electric car is a huge success and it did really good. That was mm -hmm. one of our biggest sales, so yeah. That's great. How did it feel being a woman in automotive? That always feels to me like so special and unusual. You know, when you say it, I, I can see from your perspective, but I never thought of myself on, as I'm a woman in the car business. I'm just in the car business. That's how I saw it. And I hired as a person that came in. I never said, oh, you're a female or you're a male. When I interviewed, I interviewed for people that wanted to help other people. Mm -hmm. That's all I looked for, not a male or a female. And as a result, I had a lot of female employees that were su very successful salespeople in my studio, in the studio I was working at. And yeah. even your daughter is in auto, right? So yes. you inspired her yes. as well. She came in and worked for me as a receptionist and she loved the sales so she came into sales and from sales she got promoted to uh, finance and then from finance she became a sales manager i've had uh, i hired a receptionist to replace her and she was one of my top producers and other finance uh, i'm sorry another uh, waitress i hired a lady waitress amazing she came in and um, she broke all record for any industry she sold 61 cars by herself if she was here she'll say 61 and a half <laughs> so she sold 61 cars in one month by herself which is oh more my. than any dealership as a whole sold on that same month so. oh my gosh yeah, there's a lot of success, and again, female, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of success in that studio, in Orange Coast studio, because of the way we hired and the way that we looked at our customers, the way we treated our customers, and it's something I wanted. I wanted them, I wanted a different atmosphere, not a car dealership atmosphere, I wanted a studio atmosphere. So when people came in, they saw a family. Wow. That's what I wanted, yeah. That's amazing. How did you cultivate that among the people? I find that you know everybody comes in, especially in a cutthroat sales business, they mm -hmm. come in with a different attitude, but leadership makes all the difference. So how leadership. did you do it? Um, I interviewed everyone myself. I wanted to interview myself. And then um, I always got the staff involved in the interview. After I spoke with them and I liked them, I wanted even the salespeople to be involved 
with, why don't you go talk to this person who's applying for a job and see if you like them? And what do you think of them? I wanted them to feel as a family. Mm -hmm. And whoever I interviewed, I let them know that I have a family here. So if you want to be a part of it, you have to come in and want to help. So, and work as a team. And that's how I hired. And I felt that they were a family. We spent so much time with each other. Yeah. I wanted all of them to feel that I care about them, and I did. That's yeah. amazing. Well, that obviously showed, and it obviously worked. Yeah. And I can certainly appreciate not seeing yourself as a female specifically, but let's talk about business in general. So the questions I ask as part of the Women in Business series is, what's the greatest lesson you learned in business until now? Hmm. Greatest business. I heard something recent which applies so much throughout the years. Don't do good business with bad people. So I have all, I've never put it, verbalized it that way, mm -hmm. but I've always lived that life. So no matter how good the business is, if you work it with a bad person, it will never be good, no matter how well the idea is. So if you have a good idea, work it with a good person. That's wonderful. And yeah, I've lived it. I just had someone verbalize it and I thought, how? He's talking about me. Yeah. That's perfect. So, yeah. And what about challenges? What was your greatest challenge? Um, greatest challenge are separation, balance between work and home. Because I love what I did, mm -hmm. the work I did, there was no balance. I enjoyed going to work so much that I would have 12, 13 hour days without getting tired. Right. I mean, my husband would have to call me and say, are you coming home or should I come get you? <laughs> so yeah. But at least he offered so, to come get you. Yes, yes, yes. As opposed Very to, supportive. I'll leave the yes. key under the mat. <laughs> Very supportive. So balance, if mm -hmm. I had to live life over again, I would put a balance. I would put maybe a um, time limit for myself. Great. And to a young woman just getting into business today, mm -hmm. what would you advise her? Enjoy what you do. Enjoy what you do because if you enjoy it, it's not work and you will not get tired of it. And if you don't like it, then don't do it. There's so many opportunities, different opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. Find what you love and then when you do it, you'll always be a success and you won't get tired. And that takes us perfectly into the next session. section mm -hmm. is you're on to your next. Yes. So you've left auto, sort yes. of. Yes. And you've decided to pick up a new career, a passion career. So tell us about Go Healthy Catering. Okay, so um, I love to cook. I love, love to cook. Even while I was at the studio at our dealership, I always had a crock pot somewhere. I always had a pressure cooker somewhere because we work long hours. Yeah. And um, I always liked healthy eating. I always wanted food, something for us to have that was healthy. And it's very difficult to find that. Mm -hmm. So being in business and hungry <laughs> and seeking, I knew that there were a lot of places that felt the way I did. And so I, having a conversation with a girlfriend said, hey, let's do this. Let's start cooking and catering healthy food to the business owners, to the business workers for the um, luncheon or dinners or what have you, but provide something other than the fast food. And um, the maple bacon donuts. Correct. <laughs> correct. Although they're good, I, I mean, but at the right time. Yes. Yes. That definitely. is an everyday staple. Definitely. So the organic and the healthy and the um, hormone-free product, those things are what I wanted to bring for lunch mm -hmm. to someone like me who is at work with a meeting after meeting and the customer after customer and the employee after employee and squeeze something in. Oh, okay. Let's have someone run and get us a pizza or run or get me a sandwich. And um, so my girlfriend and I started it. We built it, and there is a market for it. There, there is. is a market for it, yes. And you're loving it, and this is a total passion play for you now. Yes, yes. And you've turned it into a business. And I find that I really appreciate when people move on to their next. When you see an opportunity, when you're in a position in your life mm -hmm. to be able to take that step out and say, what do I want to do next? And let's do it from the heart. Yeah. So we are very fortunate to have Netta with us again for another segment. She's going to join us with her partner, Azita, and they're going to cook for us. So stay with us and we'll be right back. <laughs> 